began to study the life of Jesus from the beginning, how he lived. Let me show you some things that I saw, some of which I've said before. The first thing you read about Jesus is in Matthew chapter 2, where, do you know the very first time Jesus appears in script, Scripture? Does it interest you the first time Jesus appears in Scripture, what people did? The first time Jesus appears in Scripture is Matthew 2, verse 8. Uh, sorry. Verse 11, Matthew 2, verse 11. The king's magi from the east came and they saw the child Jesus. And immediately they fell to the ground and worshipped him. That's the thing I wanted to stress. The first time Jesus appears in scripture, people fell down and worshipped him. I said, Lord, I never want to forget that. Matthew's gospel begins with this. He was only a child. But the first time Jesus appears in scripture, they fell down and worshipped him. I want to be a worshipper till the end of my life. Little things in scripture, if you read carefully, you'll find it. What is the last thing mentioned in Matthew chapter 28? In Matthew's gospel, the last thing mentioned about Jesus when they saw him for the last time. Matthew 28, verse 16, they went to the Mount of Olives where Jesus was going to go up to heaven. Matthew 28, verse 16, and they saw him and they worshipped him. Praise the Lord. That is how Matthew's gospel begins. That's how Matthew's gospel ends. That's how I want my life to begin every day. That's how I want my life to end every day. That's how I want my whole life to be of worshipping Jesus, falling down before him, inwardly I mean, always bowing before him with my own face in the dust, spiritually, inwardly. Lord, I am nothing. I don't want to be known. I don't want to be quoted. I don't want anybody to know my name. I don't want anybody to know who I am. I want to be a worshipper. I don't want anything in me to hinder people from seeing your glory. Do you have that desire? Do you want to be prominent in the church? Or prominent to be known by others? God have mercy on you. You are a stumbling block to Jesus Christ. Okay. So the first thing I learned about Jesus and how God's care for Jesus is in Matthew chapter 2. When Herod wanted to kill him, when he was a helpless baby, it's a lesson for us because sometimes we are helpless in some situations and people want to harm us. There's a message here for you. Some of you say, I'm so poor. I don't have any influence. I don't know any big shots who can help me in this difficult situation. I don't know any cabinet ministers or... IAS officers or police officers or anybody to influence me. I'm a poor person. I don't have any influential person I know. Wonderful. Here is somebody like that, the child Jesus. More helpless than you. He was a child. And somebody wanted to kill him. Is anybody here who somebody wants to kill you? I don't think so. He was a helpless child. And the biggest king of that area wanted to kill him. He had no hope. You think it can happen? Impossible. <laughs> because God is watching over him. The angel of the Lord, verse 19 of chapter 2, appeared to dream Joseph and said, take up the child and um, go. So, sorry, not there. In verse 13 and 14. Go to Egypt. Take up the child. Go to Egypt. Matthew 2, 13. But there are people trying to destroy this child. So Jesus, so Joseph took the child and went that night itself to Egypt. And Herod came. And like they say, the bird had flown. Wasn't there. I've experienced this myself. 
when people tried to raid my house with the police, the bird had flown. I wasn't there. I never knew about it. Just like Jesus didn't know. It's wonderful to have experiences like this. When people who hate you want to harm you. But there's a God in heaven watching. Who's planned and who's smarter than all those enemies of yours. And they can't touch you. Because your hour has not yet come. This is the example we have in Jesus. When he was helpless. And if you are a helpless person. Here is your example. That you have a father in heaven. Who is watching out to all the people who are scheming. Trying to harm you and hurt you. Maybe you have got some believers. Trying to harm you and hurt you. There were religious people who were trying to harm me and hurt me. It could be like that for you. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can't outwit God. You can't outsmart God. It's a wonderful comfort to know. To look at Jesus as your example. And this is the first example of Jesus that we are given as a baby. It's good. Because when he was older, he could take care of himself in many ways. What could he do when he was a child? An example for all helpless believers. That there's a God in heaven, if he's your father. He plans and cares for you in things that you don't even know. What other people are trying to do to you or plan against you. Doesn't make the slightest difference. You can sleep peacefully at night. <laughs> Like the psalmist says, even an army and camps around me, I will not fear. Because the Lord is like a wall of fire round about. 